Halt! We stop here. Beyond those hills lies an army of more than 50,000 men. An army that once and for all will lay waste to the Persians and their insufferable threats. Alexander, your exalted king of Macedonia, has claimed you as property in war and has requested your allegiance in his campaign to greatness. We cross Hellespont on the morrow and Alexander, in his mercy, has allowed you to choose your fate. To follow him to victory as slaves in arms, or to go home. You can't suppose they would allow us our freedom, do you? Mercy is not a virtue found under a Macedonian flag. Impunity does not rest well with Alexander unless proven or earned. Agreed. Here is where we make our choice. To whom do you pledge your allegiance, slave? However, be forewarned, Ptolemy does not like men who shun greatness. Speak, slave, that your will be known. Through my will and honor, I will subject myself to a Macedonian and follow my king into greatness. To whom do you give your allegiance? I give my allegiance to no man, but to virtue only. Then you give your allegiance to death. Those who give their allegiance to death are those who live for nothing greater than to run from it. And you, if you die now, you will die without a proper burial and with nothing to pay the ferryman. Left to the animals to feast on your body. Then when I am dead, give me a stick and I will beat away any creature that attempts to disturb me. <laughs> a stick. And what use will a stick be to you when you are dead? With no awareness to use it. If I lack awareness when I am dead, then what do I have to fear in death? Or what the animals may do to my body? <laughs> I hope you survive. My philosopher friend, I truly do. Slave, to whom do you pledge your allegiance? I'll never join you or your pitiful king. May the Persian army desecrate the graves they throw you in. Ptolemy, I think this slave would like to go home. Can you show him the way? Look what he received for virtue. What good is virtue? Virtue finds you at the losing end of a blade. Virtue is found in action. Not in pious threats. You speak well. It's a shame your words have only a short time to breathe. Reconsider virtue, friend. If only so you may entertain me on more favorable circumstances. And what if we are to be killed on the morrow in battle? What then? We shall have lost both our lives and ourselves. 
Of what use are you to yourself, to your wife, to your country? When you are become afraid of death and void of shame? Of what use are you if you are nothing but a plaything in another man's game? Would you require that I should give freely of that which lies only in my control? That which no man could take? That I should give it to those who would sacrifice it for an oboe? You pay a far greater price for your life than I. For he sells you your life for voluntary slavery. I will not pay his price. He must pay mine. <clears throat> How shall you have us treat you, slave? Like a Greek. Ah, a Greek slave? And a Theban, no less. To whom do you pledge your allegiance? I give my allegiance to no man, but to virtue only. Then you will die. This is not death. For I am restored. Death is reserved for those who fear to live. And yet endure it. Slave, will you follow your king to victory, or join your Theban friend? I follow no man who sells me my life. If your king want me, then he can ask me. You're a slave, and you will die a slave. Make it quick this time.
Restrain him! What is your name, soldier? Menes. Son of Dionysus of Pella. Great king. A great man told me that courage is the first of the human virtues. And it is by that which make all the other virtues possible. So, as king of Macedonia, son of Philip, I offer you your freedom for your courage. Yet, as courtesy to your request, I am asking you, not as a slave, but as an officer and a Greek, embark on this glorious enterprise destined to give you an immortality in the ages. One sure to make even Achilles himself jealous. As my soldiers, as my witness, and the almighty Zeus above, will you join me, Menes? <laughs>